Hey, Steve Nani here doing the junkyard crawl at Burnston Auto Wrecking in Burnston, Massachusetts with a 1953 Ford Crestliner two-door hardtop. This was pretty much Ford's statement of modernity in the 1950s. I mean, it's got everything you want. The hardtop body style, no fixed pillars, open air driving, but with the convenience of a roof. It's got a V8, but what's this under the hood? A flathead? Yes. That's a 1932 vintage design. So Ford was modern, but maybe not so much. So what is a flathead? Follow me, let's explore. One thing I love about the junkyard is it's also a classroom. You know, I learn every time I come here. These three engines are good examples of the Ford flatheads and the engine that replaced them. Now, before we do that, the flathead, well, here they are right here. You can see right here, they call it the flathead. This is the cylinder head here, and it is indeed flat. You know, why? Well, the exhaust ports are actually in the block right here. There's three of them, and they make their way from the cylinders out here to a manifold. And if you think these are pretty restricted and convoluted, you're right. The intake ports aren't much better. This is the top of the engine. These are the intake ports right here that go from the intake valve uh, right here to the manifold being fed by the carburetor. The beauty of the flathead is it's simple. And again, these were made from 1932 until 1953. Uh, these were the engines really that put V8 performance into the hands of anybody, including uh, you know kids, hot rodders. These are basically the backbone of American hot rodding right here, the flathead Ford V8. But by 1953, this thing was pretty asthmatic and was not beginning to compete with the overhead valve pushrod engines, the Oldsmobile Rocket, the Cadillac 331, the Hemi of 1951. So Ford had to do something. That something was this. This is the Y block, Ford's first overhead valve V8, 1954. Now, in its debut year, it was also 239 cubic inches, but the difference is the flathead was 3.19 inches in bore, 3.75 inches stroke. So the bore was smaller than the stroke. It was what we call an undersquare design, good for low RPM use, but not good at the top end at all. By contrast, the Y block overhead valve engine was over square with a 3.5 inch bore and a 3.1 inch stroke. So it was over square. So these were a better design in many ways. So what is an overhead valve design? Well, here's the valve cover uh, and we take it off. And these are rocker arms right here. Uh, exhaust rocker intake, uh, exhaust intake, etc. These allow for much better, more streamlined ports. The exhaust ports come out of the heads and go into these exhaust manifolds rather than going through the block as they did on the old flathead right down here. So again, the, the point of the overhead valve pushrod type engine is superior breathing thanks to the cylinder heads that are mounted on top of the block. Now these are called the Y block because the block skirt comes down in an extension here. Viewed from the front, it's not a V, it's more like a Y. The idea with this here, this extra metal, was that this would make the crankcase, the block, more rigid and stiffer and therefore allow uh, you know greater power without the trouble of, of things moving around. Speaking of bottom ends, this is a modern five bearing design as are most modern American V8s. The flathead by contrast was a three main bearing design. One bearing, two bearings, and three bearings, which means that the center cylinders are not supported. So anybody who raises one of these things at Bonneville knows these love to puke the crankshaft out the bottom. By contrast, when Ford went to the Y block in 1954 on up, they went to the five bearing design, five mains, which uh, secured the crank much better. Now the thing is, the Y block was generally a bread and butter type engine. Most were two barrels, although Mercury uh, was always four barrel equipped uh, from 1954 through 1959. Any Four, a Mercury 312, 292 had a four barrel carburetor. In particular, 1956 Mercury's Thunderbird owners love them because every single 1956 Mercury, like a half a million were made, well, quarter million, every one of them had a four barrel carburetor equipped Y block. So if you have a Thunderbird and you find a 56 Mercury, you got a 312 four barrel. Anyway, this one here is a two barrel. We see up here, the manifold has two holes, nothing too sexy, but by contrast, there was something called 
the F code, this thing right here. Now this is the Y Block magazine, uh, and it's kind of a fan club. This is actually from 2008. I'm not sure if these are still around. But this is the F code Supercharge 312. There's the McCulloch Supercharger right here that forces air into the carburetor, and these things made 300 horsepower out of 312 cubic inches. And this was basically Ford's answer to the fuel-injected Chevy 283 of 1957. But this here is a two-barrel, probably a 272, maybe a 292. Now the Y Block was made through 1962, I believe, and was used in full-size Fords. These were large engines, never used in the Fairlane or the Falcon, simply too big. In fact, 1962 brought us the Ford 221 small block, which was very different than the Y block. It had a shorter skirt, probably about 90 pounds lighter than one of these things here. But one thing that's kind of cool about the, uh, the flathead and the Y block, this is Motor Life magazine, February 1954. And this was... Uh, came out when the flathead was replaced by the Y block. And in fact, this one here has a comparison, and here it is right here. Here are the specs right here. We can see the differences in, on the left, overhead valve, uh, zero, to, zero to 30, 5.4 seconds versus 6.1, uh, zero to 60 in uh, 16.2 seconds versus 20. So again, the beginnings of performance were uh, coming on in 54, when Ford finally abandoned the mighty flathead V8. And again, the flathead today, you can still get um, reproduction parts for these things, H&H &H flatheads, the Herman family out of La Crescenta, California. They even make a thing called the R. Dunn Hemihead. Yes, Zora Arcus Duntov in New York State in the early 1940s made a Hemi conversion for the flathead Ford, used for trucks and also for hot rodding. They're very rare today, but the H&H &H flathead people do make reproduction Ardun heads. So if you have 20 grand to blow, you can build yourself a, an Ardun Hemi flathead. The only downside, remember, keep it under 300 horsepower or you might run over your three bearing crankshaft. But that's the story of how Ford in 1954 went from the Stone Age into the, the overhead valve rocket age, if you will, the old rocket 1949, which was a groundbreaking engine. So uh, here we have it right here, the Junkyard as Classroom. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mags YouTube channel and stick around for more here from Bernison Auto Wreckage.